In this section, you will learn the interpretation of manometry recordings. Esophageal high resolution manometry is reported in accordance with the Chicago classification. The interpretation depends on the identification of several pressure topographic landmarks. These landmarks include anatomic sphincters, contractile segments, transition zone and the contractile deceleration point. Anatomical sphincters are areas in which there are abrupt changes in pressure along the luminal axis. They may be visualized as distinct high pressure zones or pressure bands. This includes the upper and the lower esophageal sphincters. The esophagogastric junction may have a substantial morphological variability in pressure plots. This is a result of the potential laxity of the attachment between the low esophageal sphincter and the crural diaphragm. There are three main variants of the esophagogastric junction, which also takes into account the pressure inversion point and the changes seen during inspiration and expiration. A type 1 gastroesophageal junction is completely normal. The crural diaphragm is completely superimposed on the low esophageal sphincter. It can only be identified during inspiratory contractions. In a type 2 esophagogastric junction, there is a slight separation between the low esophageal sphincter and the crural diaphragm. There is, however, no low pressure gap between these two. In a type 3 esophagogastric junction, there is complete separation between the low esophageal sphincter and the crural diaphragm. In a type 3a, the pressure inversion point is at the level of the crural diaphragm. In type 3b, the pressure inversion point is at the low esophageal sphincter. Contractile segments are contractions demarcated by three pressure troughs. There are four contractile segments, named 1 to 4, in the craniochordal direction. These are demarcated by the proximal, middle and distal troughs. The first contractile segment is continuous with the pharyngeal and upper esophageal contraction. The fourth contractile segment is the lower esophageal sphincter. The transition zone indicates the transition from the central nervous system control of peristalsis to the enteric nervous system, which is the myentric plexus, and corresponds to the proximal trough. An abnormality in this region may cause dysphagia in a minority of patients. The conduction velocity is measured on the pressure analysis by the slope of the 30 mm isobaric contour. An isobaric contour is a line drawn joining all the points of a given pressure. For example, a 20 mm isobaric contour is a line joining all locations where the pressure is 20 mm of mercury. Conduction velocity is not constant along the entire length of the esophagus. It is more rapid proximally than distally. The contractile deceleration point demarcates the transition between these and usually lies within 2 cm of the proximal margin of the esophagogastric junction. Using intraluminal manometry, 
the pressure generated by the Lewis wedge sphincter cannot be distinguished from other contributions like the diaphragmatic crura or pathological processes like extrinsic compression. The integrated relaxation pressure is the composite measure of both the Lewis wedge sphincter and the pressure generated by the crura. This is a measure for assessing the adequacy of esophagogastric junction relaxation with swallowing. This is defined as the average minimum esophagogastric junction pressure for 4 seconds of relaxation, which is either contiguous or non-contiguous, within 10 seconds of swallowing, which is indicated by the upper sphincter relaxation. The distal latency is the interval between the upper esophageal sphincter relaxation and the contractile deceleration point. It is dependent on the integrity of the deglutive inhibition rather than the peristaltic velocity. Contractions may be defined as premature or of normal latency based on the distal latency. The normal median distal latency is 6.2 seconds with a minimal value of 4.6 seconds. The lower limit of the normal value is therefore 4.5 seconds. Premature contractions are particularly significant because they are never seen in normal subjects. They form an important diagnostic criterion for type 3 achalasia and distal esophageal spasm. The peristaltic integrity is an indicator of the presence or absence of gaps and the length of those gaps in the 20 mm isobaric contour, spanning from the upper sphincter to the esophagogastric junction. The contractile front velocity is the velocity of the esophageal peristaltic contraction prior to the contractile deceleration point. This is measured using the 30 mm isobaric contour. The upper normal limit of the contractile front velocity is 9 cm per second. The software will automatically calculate and display this value for each swallow. Displayed in red in this study is the contractile front velocity of 4 cm per second. The CFV is utilized to define rapid contractions, a borderline abnormality, when it's not associated with weak peristalsis. The distal contractile integral is a summary measure of the vigor of the distal esophageal contraction. This includes the segment spanning from the proximal to distal pressure troughs and is the product of the amplitude, duration and length of the contraction. A box is constructed to delineate the contractile activity of the second and third contractile segments. The DCI is calculated by summing the pressure measurements at each coordinate within this area. The first 20 mm is ignored in the computation to exclude the vascular artifacts and intrabolus pressure. Based on the DCI, several abnormalities may be detected. A hypercontractile esophagus, also known as a jackhammer esophagus, is where there is any swallow with a DCI of more than 8000. A hypertensive or a nutcracker esophagus has a mean DCI between 5000 and 8000. Deep peristalsis has a DCI of less than 450 and failed peristalsis is where the DCI is less than 150. The Chicago classification of esophageal motility uses a stepwise algorithm to diagnose esophageal motility disorders using esophageal pressure topography. Although the diagnosis 
mostly correspond to conventional manometric diagnosis and diseases, high resolution manometry itself has redefined these diagnoses by characterizing the pressure topography in each of these conditions. The distinguishing feature in this classification system is the use of a hierarchical categorization of esophageal motility using a sieve-like process. The most abnormal or pathological conditions are identified first followed by less severe and borderline abnormalities. This process relies on the likelihood of the pressure patterns being present in the population. The first tier is never seen in normal individuals. The, the borderline abnormalities are statistically outside of the norm but is expected in about 5% of a normal population and therefore not necessarily indicative of a pathology. The classification relies primarily on two factors, the integrated relaxation pressure and the peristalsis. In addition to the two main factors, Several other components are required in further delineating the diagnosis. The esophagogastric junction morphology. The diagnosis of a hiatus hernia depends on this. You can see more about this on the section on anatomical sphincters above. The pressurization patterns defined independent of the integrated relaxation pressure. Anisophageal pressurization is pathognomonic of type 2 achalasia. Compartmentalized pressurization is frequently seen in esophagogastric junction outflow obstruction. 